temporal lobe helps us to determine what kinds of objects we are looking at. Nancy Kanwisha of MIT is studying a portion of the temporal lobe where we recognize a high priority object, the human face. What we usually see is a little patch of brain in the back in the right hemisphere, mine is right about in there someplace on the bottom surface of the brain, that produces a much stronger signal when the subjects look at faces than when they look at anything else. All you need to do is lie there, hold still, real still, and look at ten of This brain activity occurs across a wide range of faces. Front views, side views, line drawings, cartoon faces, even cat faces all produced a very strong response. But was it really whole faces that were creating this effect, or just parts of faces? One of the things we've been concerned with is to argue that it really is faces per se that this area responds to, rather than, say, um, two little dots or curvy lines or other kind of simpler descriptions of features that may be present in faces but may not themselves be faces. So if you look at this image, most people can't tell what that is. On the other hand, if you look at this image, sometimes it takes a second, but most people eventually get it. This is actually the same image. So it's not just the curves or dots or angles in the image because they're the same. It's the same image. It's whether you perceive a face in the image or not. For humans and other social primates, decoding faces is essential. A brief glance can tell you who someone is, their sex, their mood, and enables us to judge if they are friend or foe. Repeated processing of faces over time may actually feed back to change the structure of our brain. It is known that the cortex is very plastic and organizes itself around the experiences it has. So maybe simply because we look at faces all the time in our daily lives, that is sufficient to produce a special purpose patch of cortex that does face recognition. But of course the other perfectly plausible story is that recognizing faces was so critical to the survival of our primate ancestors that natural selection helped shape cortical machinery dedicated to face recognition.
The study of facial expressions is one way of measuring emotion. Chimpanzees have among the most expressive faces in the natural world. I think you can believe what you see in a chimpanzee facial expression. When they're screaming, I don't think there's any reason not to believe that they're upset about something the same way that, that we would be upset about something. Studies have already identified at least five universal expressions easily recognizable in higher primates. Fear, disgust, surprise, and anger. Right now we're doing a lot of tests that involve face recognition to get enough background about emotion and what the chimpanzees understand about their emotional signals and what they understand about what the the context might be if there's been a fight, if they're involved in calming one another down after a fight. When they play, they have very distinctive facial expressions. Uh, and this kind of behavioral evidence gives us the first basis to believe that these facial expressions have very distinctive meanings and that they, they do communicate about different types of emotion. What the chimpanzee understands about their own emotional signals and their own emotional behavior is really, I think, pertinent to understanding a little bit more about the evolution of emotion in humans and, and why we are the way we are. <laughs>